let's get started. Thank you for coming to the very last talk of the conference. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, we have a small group here, so I'm going to, to an extent, tailor this to the audience. So audience participation, very welcome. Um, so yeah, welcome to Harvest Now, Decrypt Later, addressing quantum safe cryptography in open source development. Um, I am Alex Bozarth. Uh, I work for IBM Quantum, doing open source development on various projects focused on quantum safe or post quantum. Uh, if you want to connect with me later, my LinkedIn is there. Uh, it's just me presenting today, despite all the schedules saying otherwise. Um, most of my team had other places to be. So yeah, um, this talk kind of breaks down into three parts. And how long we focus on each part will depend on audience interaction. So the first part is going to be talking about the quantum cryptography threat. The second part is going to be talking about what is quantum safe cryptography and the various open source initiatives working on it. And then the last part is going to be a demo, where I actually dig into the code and show you guys how to leverage quantum safe in OpenSSL in specific. And then some Q&A at the end. So question, first question to the audience, how many people caught uh, Dr. Max and Hart's talk on Tuesday about the PQCA? Raise your hands. OK, about half the room. That's, they covered my first third. So we'll sound about the same to the half of you that were already there. Um, how many of you are developers? OK, that's most of the room. Then we're definitely going to be diving into the uh, demo at the end, because that will actually help you guys. OK, so then the quantum cryptography threat. I just straight up stole this slide from Dr. Max. It has a completely different theme. Uh, it's sufficiently large enough quantum computers can break all traditional public key encryption. How many people have any understanding or background on what encryption is? Everybody kind of mostly know what encryption is, no need to detail, good. So for those familiar with Dr. Max's slides, we'll note that uh, this real cool diagram. The idea of why quantum. Quantum computers have the ability to easily solve more algorithms and cryptography than traditional computers can solve. Thus, the not all hard problems, but much more. Uh, how many people know what MP hard is or MP? We got two. That's for the math people in the room. It's uh, theoretically, if you solve all MP problems, you can solve all math. It's almost like the keys to the kingdom of physics and understanding the universe. So I'm going to do a quick overview on quantum for those in the room. How many have seen quantum or heard of quantum and how qubits work in the past? OK. Preface, I'm no expert on how quantum computers work. There are better people for that. I would recommend looking them up online. Uh, but in general, the idea is rather than using bits, like traditional computers use like ones and zeros down at the very base level, quantum computers use qubits. Qubits are literally uh, real, actual elements, like um, protons and electrons that we are observing and uh, setting into something called superposition. By doing this with these electrons, we can actually connect multiple qubits together, in, and they will interact with each other in a way that allows us to do really cool things that normal computers can't do. Again, this is all layman's terms. I'm not trying to teach you cool physics. Not my place. But the idea is, by using these qubits, we can do much more difficult math because it is not just simple ones and zeros. Any questions on qubits or clarifications? It's OK if you don't fully understand it. That's not the most important part of this talk. <laughs> so because of quantum computers, our current cryptography is at risk. Our current cryptography is based on what we call prime factors, where you get to get a really, really big number that usually has is a multiple of two prime numbers. And the prime numbers, it's a multiple, are big. It's a big number. And by having all those numbers be really big, traditional computers have 
an impossible or near impossible task of computing it. It could take them centuries or not at all. But quantum computers can break this really, really, really fast using, uh, for example, something called Shor's algorithm. We got this great graph here that shows you how drastic it is. On the top there is how fast classical computers would break any prime factorization. On the bottom, you see how fast Shor's algorithm does it. It's pretty flat, meaning it's a linear-ish uh, on, based on the number of digits in the number you're trying to factor. This is the problem. This is why we need different methods, because these quantum computers are going to just be able to break our current uh, way of doing it. Which then, of course, breaks the question. But they can't do it yet, so why does it matter? Um, and that comes to the name of the talk, Harvest Now, Decrypt Later. The idea that mal actors out there can go get all your data right now. It's all encrypted. They can't read it. And they go and they save it on big, huge databases for later. And then 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line, quantum computers finally catch up. They have access to them. They pull all that data out of that that they saved. And now they can break it. And they can get into your data. Not super important if all you're doing is browsing the internet and they get your like internet history. but. What if it's your banking history? What if it's corporate secrets? There can be, there's a lot of data going across the internet right now that needs to be secure for decades from now. So, we refer, uh, so we've uh, started referring to this day that quantum computers catch up and can start breaking this as Q-Day. And some estimates say Q-Day can be in five, six years. Could be 15 years, could be 30 years. We don't really know yet. It's still early, but the quantum computers are getting much better very fast. Ah, yes, I just saw my note here. This is something I called out in Dr. Max's talk. So currently, IBM has like an approximate 100 qubit system, but it's stackable, meaning those uh, chips can, uh, can run in parallel. So by the end of the year, IBM's projected to be at 1,000 qubits. And in other fronts, Microsoft just announced that they've had a 800 times speed up in their quantum computers because of new methodology in their air handling and checking for errors in their qubits. So there is a lot of forward momentum that we don't know how fast it is yet. So what is quantum safe cryptography? Um, you also hear it called uh, post-quantum cryptography, uh, which is the more common used term uh, as we're establishing this field. And the idea is it uses new math problems that are really, really hard for traditional computers to break, because that's the point. Uh, we want them to be hard for both traditional computers and for quantum computers. So most of the ones we're working on right now uh, are lattice-based. I'm not going to try to explain lattices to you. It's math that even I have trouble keeping up with, and I have a math undergrad. <laughs> but it's the idea of using vectors rather than prime factorization. Can you hear me now? OK, we'll do this one. Cool. I don't mind this. I've done both mics before. OK, where was I? Got distracted there. Yeah, so the idea behind lattices is you get some vectors, and it's hard to figure out where uh, the origin is. Again, I'm not an expert on how lattices work. I'm not going to try to explain it to you. But this new uh, form of uh, algorithms are theoretically, that's the other key, theoretically not able to be broken by quantum computers. Theoretically being key here, they're still being researched. Even th these algorithms are cutting edge. And there are people out there trying really, really hard to break them on traditional computers just because they want to. And that's important, because 
we want to know if those wouldn't work before we completely switch over to them because that's uh, the importance of security. Also, to be clear, you can see that third point. The, the idea of using quantum safe algorithms is not to replace the algorithm, algorithms we're already using. What we actually plan to do is use hybrid algorithms where you stack the two on top of each other and so you encrypt twice, the traditional way and the new way, just in case. So it doesn't prevent uh, any f future proofs while keeping up to current standards. And if you want to learn a ton about this, uh, my team last year made an education course uh, all about the actual cryptography. It goes into crypto history all the way up to now and then ends with lattices. Um, in fact, all the knowledge I have of lattices was from helping my team write this course. And I still don't even remember it all because it's a lot of math. Um, this course is also really good in the fact that it gives you the math in dropdowns where you can close the dropdowns and not have to think about the math and just focus on what, is, what the math is enabling. But the math is still there for the, the nerdy people who want to do it like myself. And so uh, QR code's there um, for anybody who wants to grab it. Um, I will move on then. We're kind of busting through this. So uh, about half you guys saw Dr. Max's uh, talk earlier in, the, uh, early in the week, but the Post-Quantum Cryptography Alliance, or the PQCA, is the new Linux Foundation open source umbrella for post-quantum cryptography. Just was founded in February. We're brand new. We're still ramping up. Uh, we got multiple people in the audience, uh, Douglas and Hart, who are helping uh, lead that initiative. And uh, I'm not going to do that huge uh, fatty quote there in the middle. That's direct from Hart slides earlier in the week. But that is the mission statement. Um, and to start, we have two projects. We have the Open Quantum Safe project, which is the one I'm going to be giving more details on, and the PQ Code Package pro uh, project, which is a brand new project that we're still ramping up alongside the PQCA that's going to contain actual implementations of the algorithms um, from a variety of languages and a variety of algorithms. But to focus on Open Quantum Safe, which is the project I've uh, been knee deep in for the past year as a layman trying to figure out what is it, how does it work, how can I use it. Uh, it consists of three parts, uh, LibOQS, which is a library of post-quantum algorithms and an API to access them. It's a C library. Um, and then we also have what, uh, the OQS demos, which are just various uh, prototype inter, uh, integrations for different protocols and applications. Uh, it's not production. It's just, hey, I want to use this. What does that look like? It's great for sales team and educators. And the final one, which is the one I'm going to be delving into today, which is the OQS OpenSSL provider, which integrates those LibOQS uh, algorithms into OpenSSL, so we have a post-quantum, quantum-safe OpenSSL, which then can be levered by other applications. Which leads me into my step-by-step, -step, what I'm calling a demo. Not completely a demo, more of just a walkthrough through the code. I'm going to go through the different uh, pieces that we just talked about and kind of show you how to use it. Um, before I move into hands-on dev stuff, does anybody have any questions about what I've covered so far? Sounds good. Okay. So I got a little high-level overview. This is kind of uh, using curl as an example, but this is uh, how a provider works with OpenSSL. So curl makes a TLS call. It goes to the OpenSSL library, which then needs to look up an algorithm to uh, encrypt it with. It goes to the current provider. If you didn't do anything, it would just use the default provider for OpenSSL that gets shipped with it. In our case, we're going to have built the OQS provider and sidecarred it in, and it would instead go to the OQS provider to get the encryption algorithms. Then the OQS provider looks up the, the algorithm implementation within the uh, LibOQS library through its API. Nice and simple. You get that big OpenSSL provider stack box around it. Easy way to look at it. 
So I'm going to leave the next few slides have a bunch of uh, screenshots on the side of all the build commands that I would have run if I wanted to do this demo live and not pre-build all these libraries in advance since they can take five to 10 minutes to build each library. Uh, but the idea is we're going to be installing uh, a few libraries, OpenSSL, LibOQS, the OQS provider, curl, and HAProxy. HAProxy is going to be our final demo application. Oh, and uh, I had a note to myself, so I remind. Uh, I will have QR codes at the end. All of this uh, tutorial demo is in a blog format for you guys to try yourself later. I will have uh, QR codes on a slide later on for you guys to uh, try that on your own. So our first step is we install OpenSSL. Uh, we have to install our own version locally. You can't just tinker with the system version because most OSs don't like you tinkering with system OpenSSL. Uh, in the case of containerization, you'd have to do this anyway. Uh, and so we download and uh, install OpenSSL. And uh, this, the key here is OpenSSL 3. Uh, the idea of providers was added in OpenSSL 3. If you wanted to use OpenSSL 1, one, how out of date are your systems? And uh, two, OQS has a slightly out of date fork of it that you could try out, but you shouldn't be on OpenSSL 1 anymore. <laughs> nope. There we go. So our next step is to install LibOQS. Uh, LibOQS is pretty straightforward to install. You just uh, check it out uh, locally and build it. It includes all the implementations of the quantum safe algorithms that are uh, available through the PQCA currently, currently being the keyword. Uh, and it has a common API for that to access it in C. Um, we also have wrappers for Python, Go, Rust, and many more. I call out those three because the teams working on those are updating those on an almost weekly basis, whereas the other wrappers are a little out of date. Uh, but the idea is you are able to access uh, LibOQS through any language you want. You don't have to use C just because it was written in C. So yeah, so now we have uh, OpenSSL and LibOQS installed. We can install the Open Quantum Safe provider, or the OQS provider. Um, Quick overview of what a provider is. I've kind of given the general summary, but uh, I love this text. Uh, an OpenSSL provider is a unit of code that implements a set of encryption algorithms in a format expected by OpenSSL. It is the most pedantic <laughs> sentence, <laughs> but it is literally the only way to describe a provider without uh, being fundamentally wrong with what it is. Uh, but the idea is the OQS provider will wrap LibOQS because OpenSSL can't use LibOQS directly. It needs the provider to be a middleman. Uh, really cool fun fact, the OQS provider is actually the example provider that OpenSSL uses in its integration tests when you are on GitHub. They, when they were looking for a provider to be the example for all their tests, they used us. So we are, we are the star child of OpenSSL 3 providers. Um, but of course, by doing this, this makes OpenSSL quantum safe, which then can be used in things like NGINX, uh, curl, and HAProxy. Oh, um, as a note here for people interested in the details, uh, there's a lot of different ways you can quote unquote turn on a provider in OpenSSL. Uh, the way we're doing it is we are editing a environmental variable to point at a config file and the config file points at a directory that contains the uh, provider source code. So yeah, uh, in, so as I just mentioned, the idea is you just set a couple environmental variables and OpenSSL will uh, run using that provider. I have the screenshot there so I don't have to uh, tinker with this as much, but you'll see that there's a default provider and an OQS provider. Uh, that means that just because we've installed the OQS provider doesn't mean you can only use LibOQS algorithms. You still have access to all the normal algorithms if those are the ones you want. It doesn't like handicap your OpenSSL instance. Okay, before I move on to actually using this stuff, anybody have questions 
with all my notes and install steps. As I said, it's going to be very dev. Cool. So yeah, so uh, next we want to install curl. Um, one of the things that I learned very quickly while working through this, uh, curl and OpenSSL really don't play nice unless you build them manually. Uh, in order to make curl quantum safe, you have to build it using a local, using your quantum safe uh, OpenSSL. You can't just configure a version of a uh, pre-built version of curl to be quantum safe. It has to be built with quantum safe OpenSSL at build time, uh, which of course your companies can then package and ship if you want. Another joy of containers. Uh, Really cool, uh, curl has a flag called dash dash curves, which allows you to specify what algorithm you want to use, which makes this really easy. So this is uh, our first actual step where I'm going to be opening up a terminal. So, um, so we're going to show how curl works. So the idea is you run two commands. Uh, the, fir uh, the first one is going to grab a CA cert um, from our test server that OQS uh, provides. It's uh, great for testing out all the algorithms yourself. It's for demo purposes only, such as this talk. And then once we have that cert, we can run the following command. I'm going to paste this in and pray and hope that the server's up right now. Yeah, it's up right now. Perfect. Oh, OK, that's annoying. Uh, let's see, how can I swap the screens? Can I switch displays like that and then, nope, that doesn't help you guys. I thought I tested this in advance. I can always do that and then do this. <laughs> that works. OK, so the command I ran is I ran my local version of curl that I built with this Kyber uh, algorithm. And I made sure to use the cert that I downloaded in order to access the uh, Open Quantum Safe test server. Uh, after a change that I personally put in last year into curl, uh, you can actually see the algorithms used in your connection on curl now. Uh, this was not here a year ago. Um, it's in the latest version of curl that was released in December. So if you're using the latest version of curl, it will be there. Um, similarly, at the same time, we also added a stack. You can see the whole cert stack of what, uh, what algorithms were used at every level of the call. And again, you see the dilithium uh, quantum safe. Dilithium is one of the quantum safe algorithms. Uh, the project that invented it was called uh, Crystals. And so they named their two algorithms Dilithium and Kyber, because we are all nerds. <laughs> I love it. The lawyers do not love it, but we love it. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, that is a quantum safe. Let's see, did that work? Nope, it's on the wrong screen. Let's swap displays. There we go. So yeah, so that's a quick curl demo. That was the demo that I personally put together last year. I wrote a whole tutorial on it. That was my personal experience. Now we're going to dem uh, dive into my coworker Miriam's experience. She was uh, originally supposed to be here this week on stage with me and giving this part of the talk. But she is not, so I uh, dumbed down her slides so I was smart enough to present them. So they don't have all the little code snippets like uh, mine does. Um, but this is a quick idea of HA proxy. How many people know what HA proxy is or does? OK, pretty much the, the whole room. But this is a kind of an easy to understand map of how HA proxy is set up um, in our demo case. So. As I said, I dumbed down the slides. There is no uh, dev text on them. So our first step uh, is we need to create a bunch of quantum safe uh, keys and certificates. Uh, so we create, a, uh, we create these certificates that allows us to create a certificate chain. This is then used by uh, HA proxy. And let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm checking my demo code, seeing if I need to run any of this. No. But you can see, I'm going to run this piece of code. I'm trying to escape it. There we go. 
and we're going to just run this. So this is a curl command that's specifically going to use this uh, QSC chain that I created previous, because again, demo. And it did not like that. So it does want me to run this other command first. This is why I copy and paste my commands in. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. So uh, for this little mini demo, I created a quick uh, TL uh, TLS uh, server. And then copying my other command, this is why I put these in the notes, this hits that server. And the key here is seeing the fact that it used the dilithium algorithm in its connection. So this is just a TLS handshake, nice and easy, just a short demo. And then I'm going to kill this so we can do our other parts later. OK, um, I'm just going to leave this open. Eh, it's a little small. I'll open it up. There we go. So the, yeah, so now we have all our certs and keys all that fancy cryptography stuff. And so now we want to actually build and install um, a web server that uses these quantum safes, uh, certs and keys. So we build up a local instance of Apache, uh, HTTPD, and we configure it to use those certs that I just showed you work. And then we start that server, uh, nice and easy. I'm going to do another copy and paste here. We're going to start. This, this is a curl to a server. The server has already started in the background. Um, you can see the nice Open Source Summit North America demo. Uh, that is the, the file being hosted on our little server here. So nice and easy. Now we're going to set up HA proxy to uh, use quantum safe uh, algorithms for its work. Any questions before I move on? Uh, in that case, uh, yes, the Apache server does need to know about the uh, quantum safe uh, keys and certs. Uh, it is key for that. Um, though, in, though in theory, if you're using HA proxy, you wouldn't. Um, we're actually going to, one of our next steps, which I'm going to get to now, is you can see in step two, we're going to copy those keys over to the other server to use for HA proxy. So in theory, if you have it set up with HA proxy, you didn't need to do it on the uh, Apache Server 2. We double dipped because why not demo both? But good clarification. Uh, that was not clear in my slides. Thank you. So yeah, our next step is to build uh, HA proxy using the, the quantum safe open SSL we built earlier. And then I copy the SCP, the keys over from the, from the other server, the Apache server. So it's the exact same keys and certs and use those to configure HA proxy. Then we get to start our HA proxy server. So we are approaching the end of the demo. Get over to my, this tab is the HA proxy server. So we're going to start up the server in the background. Did not like that. Did I copy the wrong one? Ah, yes. That's why. Just fix that real quick was trying to use it in the wrong place. There we go. Now it's running in the background. Oh, was it not running in the background? I can just do this. It's probably in there somewhere. Nope, maybe it's not. Nope, those are all my install commands. This is what happens when you do live demos. I'm just going to find where that command is in my directories here. This was all hidden from you guys earlier. So, oh, actually, if I'm just in this directory, I probably can just run it. Yep, there we go. I just was in the wrong directory. Did it not work that time? So close. You're right. LS, is it in bin? Is it in build? It's in build. Yep, there we go. It's probably in bin. E nope, it's not in bin. Yeah, 
Probably, if it's not in bin. Yep, there it is. Now the command should work. As I said, my coworker wrote all this part, and I have only played with it. There we go. Take 14. OK, so now we can do a curl call to that HA proxy, which is then going to tunnel into the Apache server, and it hates me. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's try this again. Curl. It does not like me. I ran this yesterday. It worked. I'm like reading through it, making sure I got it all. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to show you the tutorial that this came from rather than wasting more time staring at it. <laughs> the idea is it would show this. This is what would show up. Um, and we can see here that the curl call would be using, uh, would be connecting to the HA proxy and using the dilithium. Sorry that the last step of the demo uh, broke on us. And back to this. Almost got through the demo without any hiccups. But there's the QR codes to do the tutorials. Um, the one on the left is the first part of the tutorial where we set up uh, a quantum safe OpenSSL and test it out with curl. The one on the right is the demo that I just slightly botched with HA proxy that builds on top of the first tutorial. Um, these are available for free. And you can uh, walk through them and play with them. Uh, in theory, if you do the first tutorial and you have that quantum safe OpenSSL, you can do anything that needs OpenSSL and make it quantum safe as long as it uses OpenSSL for all of its uh, calls that need algorithms. That's the key. Just because you made OpenSSL quantum safe, if you do algorithm security outside of your OpenSSL calls, those won't automatically be fixed. <laughs> So yeah, um, that's kind of the end of the demo. Um, special thanks to my team. Uh, Miriam's the one who made the HA proxy. As I said, she was supposed to be up here with me, but uh, she had some family issues that uh, she needed to deal with and wasn't able to make the trip. Dr. Max is our uh, team lead. He was here earlier this week, but he is doing th three conferences in the span of a week and had to dip out early. <laughs> and then uh, I'm also calling out my uh, coworker, Nigel. Uh, he helped me uh, present a similar version of this talk uh, in London a couple months ago, uh, which we got most of the early slides about quantum from. So uh, I'm going to open it up. We got five minutes, but it's the end. So if you guys want to leave, feel free. But five minutes for Q&A. Um, but the next steps is get involved. Uh, that's a link to the Get Involved page for the PQCA. Um, on that page, it has links to things like uh, Discord, email lists, uh, various ways that you can get involved with the PQCA. We are trying to get it up and running and uh, get the ball going. Um, so we want contributions from anybody across the board. Yeah. Uh, so this was supposed to be the Q&A mic. OK. Yeah, uh, so timeline-wise, it would be up to each project. I know, uh, for example, one of my coworkers is a big Kubernetes guy, and he's made it his mission to get Kubernetes to be quantum safe. Kubernetes is very large and slow moving, and he's been at it for a year, and there's barely steps forward in conversation. But that's, that is the first step, conversation, having the projects see that they need to make those changes and updates and do them. Um, and it is on a per project, per application basis. Uh, what our goal at PQSA is to give them the tools to do it, like LibOQS and the provider. Yeah. Yeah. 
ah, that made me realize that I might have not called out the fact that these algorithms that I kept talking about are standardized by NIST. NIST has uh, released a standard. The algorithms that we are implementing are the NIST standard. Uh, it's not official yet, I believe. I believe it's, it's, it's in that very last stage before it becomes official. The, 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 they've all been finalized, but not like ratified, I think, is kind of the idea. But yes, these are NIST standard uh, that we're working with. The, the dilithium and the kyber that I kept calling out were the NIST standard. Thank you for calling that out. I, that was on my slide notes, but apparently not on the slides themselves. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, oh, so uh, so we haven't done quantum talks before this, so why is this, uh, why are we doing this now? Um, we're doing this now because of the quantum threat. Uh, the quantum computers are getting better very quickly, and so the idea of needing quantum safe uh, cryptography is becoming more and more important, and we believe that that should be done in the open. We believe it should be an open source initiative, and that the PQCA and the Linux Foundation leads that charge. Um, a lot of the big companies are already doing it on their own. Before, I think it was even before the PQCA announced, Apple announced that iMessage, uh, like the latest beta for iMessage, was quantum safe. Um, so the companies, a lot of companies are doing it on their own behind the scenes, but we believe that we really need to make sure the open source leads this and that the open source projects like OpenSSL are quantum safe. Say that again? Uh, I do not know, Douglas, have you heard of that paper? No, I have not heard of that paper. So. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, oh, by the way, people are like time sensitive. Now is technically the end of the talk. <laughs> but I'm, I'm willing to stick around and answer questions as long as they're there. Uh, so, uh, are you saying why do, why is OpenSSL not doing it themselves? Kind of. Oh, why are post quantum algorithms not already part of like the main OpenSSL uh, default? Uh, yeah, I, I would agree that getting it into the main, uh, the main library, the main provider, would be great. I'd say the reason it's not done yet is these algorithms are technically still, the or they're technically still theoretical proofs of concept. They're were they're cutting edge, and nobody, especially something as old and ancient as OpenSSL, wants to put the cutting edge into their default ship. So yes, that is the goal. We eventually want them to be part of the, of the core. But for now, providers is what OpenSSL uh, gave to us in order to, for us to be able to ship it with essentially the core. Because by shipping, for instance, a container that has the OQS provider installed, O the OpenSSL just works. All we have to do is use it. And though I did say, oh, we built our own OpenSSL and did that, as long as it's not like the system OS installed OpenSSL, you can sidecard on a provider to any instance. So like if you're spinning up a, uh, some sort of image or a container and it has OpenSSL in it, you don't have to rebuild OpenSSL 
to make it quantum safe. You just have to install the quantum safe provider and put it in the configuration. Does that answer your question a little bit? I see. Yeah, I do remember some conversations that I read and uh, was a fly on the wall for about around OpenSSL and its providers. Um, some people raised the, oh, we want to add quantum safe to OpenSSL. And the general response from the OpenSSL community was, that's why we invented providers. <laughs> Uh, that, that's an opinion from one or two people, but that is the current tone of the OpenSSL developers themselves is, we gave you providers so you can do that. And we'll discuss it more down the line when it's not as new. So, so there is interest, but right now that's the tone of the room is, uh, that's the purpose of providers. So in fact, I, some people within OpenSSL seem to actually want to slim down their default uh, set of uh, algorithms and essentially force all of their users to sidecar in providers with their algorithms they want to use. So rather than thinking, oh, I installed OpenSSL and these are the algorithms that come, so you say, I installed OpenSSL and this provider gives you the algorithms I want you to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I understand correctly, uh, they have no intention uh, of actually adding anything to the default provider. Um, if anything, it would be shipping with a second provider by default, not actually adding more algorithms to the default provider. So it's the, the provider concept in OpenSSL was. Uh, an interesting brainchild, and they really like the idea of not owning algorithms anymore. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Douglas? Um, yeah, so any more questions? Otherwise, I will unplug the mic, and you guys can come up and talk to me. You can talk to Douglas, hearts in the back. Uh, between the three of us, we'd probably have an answer to your PQCA questions. So, But thanks for coming uh, and staying an extra six minutes, and I hope you enjoyed your week since... When you leave this room, there's literally nothing else going on now. <laughs> the, everything's closed. <laughs> Go get your coats before they shut that down in an hour. <laughs> Thank you, guys.